as you may know, I've been using an ELO sketchbook for, I think, a couple years now? At least one, and a bit more than that. Anyway, today I'm going to be filling a spread in my sketchbook, but at the same time, I'm going to be testing out the ELO Hue alcohol-based markers for the first time so I can share my first impressions. I'm not going to lie, I got a little chuckle at the name of these markers. They remind me of another marker name. I'll leave it at that. But let's try out the low hue markers. All right, so they come in this box, very cubular, and it shows that they have a brush nib on one end and a chisel nib on the other. And they come in a cute little uh, canvas pouch. It feels like it's got some kind of cardboard to it. Velcro shut. It has their logo on the front, and this folds open. Ooh little snack for later. I'm kidding. <laughs> so they look to be square in shape. They seem to have little slots for each marker. They have a black barrel. The brush marker end has this gray plastic so that you can spot it even when the caps are on the marker. These markers aren't the most expensive markers, but they also aren't the cheapest markers out there. All right, so it looks like right now they are they're about $55 for the 36 set, which is this one right here. Oh, where are you going? Come back. <laughs> and kind of like other cheap markers, they do not list the color name on the barrel. It is only on the two caps. So you'll see if I remove the two caps, it's hard to tell specifically what color this is because it's not listed on it anywhere. They are square, so I bet ya. Oh no, seriously? Oh well, no, got it. Okay, okay. The cap does fit on the other end, which is very pleasing. It's about the same size as a Copic marker, but you can see a Copic marker lists the color name on their barrel. But let's go ahead and swatch them because honestly, the most important thing about a marker is what it looks like when you use it. Oh wait, can you like, <gasps> there's a Velcro on the back of this. You can actually curl this around and it pokes right in there. It becomes a little display case that you can then put on the side of your desk and use to access your markers real easily. That's pretty handy. Let's go ahead and give them a little swatchy swatch though. Got some grays. And that's what those look like. Right off the bat, I can tell you these are not pastel enough for my personal tastes, but you don't usually see super pastel markers in the cheaper marker sets either. So they're kind of on par with a lot of the cheaper alternatives so far. <gasps> I just noticed they have a potato burn. Move into the blues. Let's pull them all out at once. Try and put them in rainbow order <laughs> as best that I can. Got ultramarine, brilliant blue, cobalt blue. Probably should have switched those, but I'm going based off the cap. Blue sky and cerulean blue. It should transition us into greens, right? Got deep green, grass green, bronze green, and yellow green. I'm gonna keep these ones separate because they look really pastel. And I forgot to put them in with the rest of the pink swatches. Oops. Why is this color called fresh green? What? Does that look green to you? I'm nervous. Potato brown. The chisel nibs feel a little drier than the brush nibs. Okay, this is that fresh green color. Yeah, very green. Mm -hmm. The nibs also feel like some are softer than others and some are stiffer. Not a lot of consistency in the nib texture. And they also just feel a little brittle on the tips. I don't know, I've tried a lot of markers. <laughs> in my day. And that's how I'm feeling about these so far. All right, then we have these markers that I forgot to uh, put where they belong. We've got a pastel peach, a salmon pink, a cream, a powder pink, and a dark blue light. Let's see what they actually look like. Please be this pastel. Hey, I'd say it's actually lighter than the cap. Oh, you can hardly see. Let me scoochy scooch. How about pastel peach, pastel peach. Okay, so far I'm very happy with these. Okay, this one's a little bit darker than the cap, but I really like that color, so I can't really complain. Okay, yeah, that one's, that one's off. All right, the last one, dark blue light. 
that is purple. And a little darker than the cap. My personal use for markers is I use a lot of pastel colors and then I build them up and as I get more comfortable with what I'm drawing, I start darkening them up. Going in straight with dark colors scares the crap out of me. So I like to see a lot of pastel markers in a marker set, especially if it's your first marker set. So I'm glad to see a few in here. Like blue sky's a little dark, but it's the lightest blue we've got and I can definitely see me using that one a lot. Overall, you've got a decent variety, but I'd always like to see more pastels. <laughs> but let's go ahead and use them in practice and see if we run into any positives or negatives along the way. Start with a good old pencil. Here's one. I'm not sure where to put this stuff. So we basically have every color. There's a very good variety. So let's just go ahead and start drawing something. Loosen up for the day. Be very sketchy with it. If it's your first drawing for the day, you don't want to like go right into details, that's for sure. You gotta loosen up that wrist. Remind yourself that you can draw, and it might take a few tries. Turn the body a little more. I've been obsessed with half up, half down hairdos. <laughs> Actually, for a long time of my life, but they were like back in the styles, so now I'm seeing them everywhere. So let's add a little bit of that action in here. Guess she needs some arms, doesn't she? Guess I'll just make her kind of float there because this angle and gravity don't really get along. I don't really want to worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll turn this leg a little. Make it a little more interesting. Oh yeah, I like that way better. I'm gonna move that arm in a little. Bend it and have it like sitting on the leg. Kind of like this. And this one can kind of just Instagram pose around. <laughs> I want to kind of incorporate some patterns. Maybe like a hound's tooth or a plaid. Are those the same thing? I don't even know. But that's what I'm thinking. All right, I'm gonna quickly erase this. Then I'm going to draw on top of it with some line art. And then we can start using the colors. Add a little shadow under the chin. Keep it nice and simple so we can try and use the markers for shading. Little jelly bean ears. <laughs> oh, you know what's something I just noticed about this? That's a little strange? Is they didn't include a black. There's no solid black marker. Interesting. I don't use it all that often and honestly your art will be better if you use one of these warm grays or these cool grays for your black and maybe even mix it with a color that's in your color scheme. So I don't hate that because that means they included something else instead. wonder which one it was. I'm gonna stick this picky out. It's not in the sketch but it's fine. Add this arm in. I didn't think about shoes and now I'm here at the feet. <laughs> How did this happen? Let's try and add some boots in. This is why I should uh, finish your sketch before you uh, headline art. Lesson learned today. Lesson I already knew, but I tried to cheat and it has been reinstilled in my mind. Don't cheat. I kind of want to do a blue and black color scheme, which is why I realized that there's no black. So we can actually use Cool Gray 7, maybe, perhaps. Maybe perhaps. Yeah, there's some English for you. I'm gonna go ahead and color in the top cool gray seven. There's something that's really cool about alcohol-based markers, if you've never used them, is that you can layer them on top of each other to mix the colors. I think that's probably gonna be plenty dark for what I need. Yeah, they might be a little too light, but because it's a lighter color, we can actually layer it on top of itself skirt. Let's try a nice vibrant blue. So either s blue sky or cerulean blue is calling me. Oh, it's sky blue. Why did I write blue sky? <laughs> My mind's on the movies. Go ahead and fill that in. Can kind of see a little bit of streaks there. So I'll add a second layer, which makes me really glad that I didn't use a darker color for this. Okay. Then I think I'm going to go back to cool gray. Start with cool gray five. That's our middle tone gray and try to add a pattern. I'm gonna do little check marks. I think I'm gonna want something darker than this now that I'm seeing it. I think I'll go in with the cool gray seven now and just add little hints of it. I am not sure what pattern this is. Maybe it's just something abstract. Not really the plaid I was thinking. What sort of skin tones do we have? We've got these three, this one, but you can mix like yellow ochre with some of these other colors and get some nice skin tones. Let's try and use potato brown though. This one, the nib feels like it sticks out farther than the other ones. 
if that makes any sense. Okay, now what's cool about markers is you can layer them and add like blush and stuff. So we're gonna try and add a little blush and shading with this. Now you don't wanna pick a color that's too much lighter than the skin tone you picked because it'll start lifting, which I am kind of seeing happening here. So I'm gonna try and move over to, I could try orange, that might work because it is redder than the color that we're using currently for skin. And then I'm gonna blend it out back with the salmon pink. That looks kind of nice because there's the contrast between the cool outfit and the warm skin tone. I kind of like it. Color in like a coloring book. What happens if you go back over the orange with the potato brown? Ooh, that actually, I think I like that. I just feel like if you mess up, it's always the face, right? <laughs> what I like to do sometimes with the face is just get a lighter skin tone than the rest of the body. So that way you're starting lighter and you can just build up upon it, get some extra tones in there and try and match it with the body later. Why don't I try that? Oh geez, that's really light. Now what I like to do with the face is add a lot of blush, which is why I kind of want to start light so that I'm ahead of the game before I start layering too much on here. For blush and shading. The longer you wait after you do a marker, the harder it will be to blend it out. And this paper is obviously sketchbook paper and not meant for what I'm doing. So we'll see how well it handles this abuse. And the more we layer it, even with the light tones, the darker it should get. Just make sure I don't go overboard. All right, still looking a little too light. I'm gonna add a little brightness, to maybe even the ears. Blend it out. Okay, I think we're reaching the limitations of the paper. So I'm just gonna go ahead and color in the whole thing with the skin tone that we chose, which was potato brown. Maybe this is a technique best saved for actual marker paper. I think I'm gonna go ahead and take sky blue again and color in this shirt. But what I'm gonna try to do is make it look a little bit more transparent. So I'm gonna take a skin tone, maybe the orange, and just color anywhere the skin would be showing. No, not orange. <laughs> potato brown, maybe. Blow that out. They look a little transparent and a little extra shading wherever. <laughs> All right, last thing is hair. I kind of am falling in love with this natural oak color. We could use that for hair. The only problem I would see for this particular drawing is that it might be a little dark and I kind of want there to be a little bit more contrast. The other option, we could do blue hair, but I used the blue scrunchie. Another option is Cool Gray 7. I don't think the hair ever overlaps with this shirt. And then the final, kind of a little bit more out there, would be Cream, which is this color right here. So it would be like a blonde. You know what we could do? Start with the blonde, see if I like it. If the whole contrast doesn't work for me, I'm gonna go ahead and color it in with that natural oak. It's such like, it's like a red brown. I don't know, I love it. Remember that video where I said, what even is the color blonde? I found it. It's cream. I don't think these markers are refillable that I'm aware of. I feel like the blonde eyebrows aren't working for me. So, <laughs> I'm gonna do what I want to do all along. I'm going to use natural oak, color in these eyebrows, and then, then I'm going to add in her roots. Like a so. Maybe blend it out with the cream, just a little. There we go. The cream color does not really, I feel like go well with the skin tone. The skin tone is kind of orange and the cream color is kind of yellow. I don't know, so it's not working for me. After using the markers for the first time though, I am noticing there's a little, um, they do seem to be a little bit drier than some markers, not all, but they're totally usable. I also like how they're square. I don't see a lot of square markers. Oh, now I'm losing that contrast, which was the whole reason I did blonde. I also didn't give her any socks. But now that I've tested out the markers, let's maybe explore this character a little further. Let's draw her maybe in a different angle and maybe even refine her color scheme a little bit better so that we don't have any two colors that are a little bit mushy next to each other. And when I say mushy, I mean, there's not enough contrast. It's not sharp enough. And that's something I definitely want to improve upon with my art. And I've been trying to practice. I don't know if it's obvious that it's improving or anything, but I'm trying. Little hand in there. <laughs> a little too voluminous in the hair and it's coming forward a little bit too much and I feel like it looks like a different character than this one. So let's try that again. Keeping the hair behind. 
told that waste a little higher wasted. Still looks like a different character. Add in some legs. Some legs. I really like drawing legs. <laughs> I don't know why. Just always have. This time actually sketching in the boots. She looks like she'd spent a lot of time on the phone. <laughs> Got a little shading for dimension. I also have to decide on like the texture of the skirt. Let's keep it up, see if I can maintain this. <laughs> can you make this pose out? <laughs> Just kind of refine it, see if I can figure it out. This foot would be in the back. Maybe her hands on her knee. I need to figure out this foot. Kind of put push this arm backwards by shading it in. Shorten this hair a little. Try this leg again. Before I color anymore, I want to just finish drawing in this page and then I'll color my favorite. Right now, I have these two are vying for winner. <laughs> well, this one's just the only one I don't like. I like all the rest. That might be a better way to put it. Ooh, I got an idea. What if a head's kind of like turned this way, body's kind of turning like this? And then she's sitting here, legs kind of crossed at the bottom. This hand would be kind of bent like this. This hand's a little bit more stretched out. And she's just smiling crazy like. <laughs> now to refine it a little bit. <laughs> I need to move the head up a little. I'm thinking. I just realized these colors are the same as the Elohu logo. Hmm. Subconscious. <laughs> but interesting. I don't want to pull the arms backwards a little. Oh, that is cuter. Yes. Kind of like pulling back behind her. Add a little shading here. Need to refine the face a lot. If I had known I was going to draw it in such a short space, I could have filled in a little bit more down here. But it's all good. One definitely has to be in front of the other. There we go. Drew a few poses sitting down. How irregular of me. Go ahead and take a normal pencil because it's dull and fill in some of these areas that I want to be darker. Because I think I've made up my mind that I don't want to color this one. Just make it a little bit more dynamic. It goes a long way if you just add a little bit of shading. A little cheat. I'm going to shade in the back leg so I don't have to draw it. And I like to sketch a lot better. I'm almost tempted to color it, but I know that wasn't the one I wanted to do. <laughs> Thing. Anyway, I want to color in one of these. Ah, it's one of these two still. Mm, really want to do this one because it turned out well. But I always draw standing up poses, which is why it turned out well because I have a lot more practice with that. Whereas this sort of pose is not something I draw every day. So if I can color that in and it still turns out well, I feel like that shows some improvement on my part. So I think that is how I want to go about this. Take our kneaded eraser, my baby. Come on, Beluga. All right, then go in and add some line art. Just try not to mess it up. All right, making progress. I don't remember what this hand's supposed to look like. I can't make it out. Is this the thumb or the forefinger? I'll have to do. <laughs> That'll do. And the socks this time. Better than the last one. <laughs> Silently, it just attempts to not mess this up. Yay, I did it. So anytime I have a small victory like this, I'm pretty excited. Let's kind of carry that luck into the coloring. Now that we already know the colors, I can go ahead and put them in. Easy peasy. Still not sure about how we want to do the hair. Here's something I think I'm gonna have to play around with again. Being really sloppy with this. What is going on? Can't I stay inside the lines? The potato brown next. Why does that look so different? Did I use a different color? Maybe I just gotta let it fade. Let it do what it does. What it does. <laughs> try to avoid using the orange. Let's try Look at a little be a little more subdued. It's less of a change, so it's more subtle. And I think it just looks better overall. With the terracotta. This colors seem to be coming out a little darker. Hoping it's because they're just still wet. Maybe they're drying a little slower. Because mm. like this shirt is just completely darker. <gasps> oh, you know what I probably did? I probably used like pastel peach and lightened it with that. Maybe I lifted it. Yeah, it looks darker. What did I do? This time I'm gonna try and just go in completely with potato brown on the face. 
We'll see if it turns out worse or better. This color isn't really as dark as some of the skin tones I've used before, which is what I use that technique I mentioned earlier for usually. So I think I can get away without it. I'll still try blending it out with, uh, what was this, pastel peach? Actually, let me darken this. I think I want to draw the plaid in with this fine liner. We can add the slightest amount of shading with cool gray one. What happens if I use warm gray to shade the skin? Ooh, nice. Kind of like that better than the terracotta. It like pushes it further back. It's a little bit cooler. But I did use, last time I used that natural oak color for a little bit of eyeshadow. We really need some lips. Let's try pale pink for the blush. Oh, that looks so much better. Why didn't I just do that the first time? I don't know why I was so scared to use pink on this color. I am finally skin tone again. Did I just go full natural oak or something else? I could do blue hair. I could do it. All I have to do is draw on this with this blue marker and it would have blue hair. We go pink hair. It's a little bit out of the ordinary, but um, it's possible. It's totally doable. I mean, I could do the blonde hair. No, I didn't like the blonde eyebrows though. Let's try warm gray six. You know what? Might as well try something new. I'm never gonna look at this sketchbook spread again. Why can't I just experiment? Hopefully this is darker than the skin. Yes. I'm gonna just go ahead and fill in the whole thing. The brush tip does allow you to get into like smaller areas without going outside the lines. Oh, and we need color in her scrunchie. The most basic looking scrunchie. Just add a little white gel pen. Maybe around the character and for little highlights, sign it. <laughs> Boom, baby. I also used the white gel pen to kind of add highlights and texture to this transparent shirt section, which I think helped a little bit. I kind of like this one better. I don't know. It's hard to say which hair color I like better. Maybe I haven't found the right hair color yet. <laughs> I don't really like either of them. Anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching. The test out some new markers and art supplies. I do have to thank Elo for sending me these markers to try out. A lot of you have been requesting that I test them out, so thanks for recommending them. As for like a final conclusion, I've only used them in this last couple hours here, but the nib, the brush nibs do feel a little brittle, and then the chisel nibs are a little bit dry, which is kind of common with Ahu markers as well. Not to be confused with these Elo Hue markers. <laughs> the Ahu. The Ohu brush markers are a little bit cheaper. It depends on what colors come with it, how many markers and things like that. So I think Ohu are still my favorite all time cheap brush markers so far, but these are a nice close second. I think these are the first art supply Elo has ever come up with besides their sketchbooks. So it's kind of cool to see them branching into something new like this. And I'd like to see what they come up with in the future. I love having them all organized, but putting them back, mm, not so much. Ooh, I got it, I got it, I got it. Perfect. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys all next week. Bye.